Thank you for joining us, everybody. Good morning. We're, this is going to be a pretty quick webinar. We want to try and get it done in 15, 20 minutes. Um, we're joined by Rob Allen, who's the VP of Operations for ThreatLocker in Europe. So, Rob, thank you for joining us. No problem at all. Uh, we're also joined by uh, Jason E. Banks, which is sitting at the other side of my office. You have to come around because I can't turn the camera around and give everyone a wave. Uh, Jason is our resident pilot for the day. So he's going to uh, say he's going to be responsible for any accidents that happen, not me. Um, so we want to show you and introduce you to a pineapple. For those who don't know, we have a conference in February, February 1 through 3, which is a essentially a cybersecurity conferences that teaches you how to protect yourself from cybersecurity threats. It also teaches you how to break into systems, hack, use rubber duckies, use pineapples, use Metasploit, and write malware. Not because we want you to do that, because we want you to understand what the threats are. And every time we learn something we, uh, about hacking, we learn something about defending at the same time. Uh, one of the things we're going to be demonstrating and doing a lot of courses on there is the pineapple. So this is a Wi-Fi pineapple box. It comes like this. It is about $150. I can't remember the exact price, but Gary might correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it comes in a box and it's a pretty small box. I'm going to open this one up and um, we've got a few of them here. So we've attached one to the drone for the, for the real live hack. And if I can open up the plastic here, Looks a little bit like this, pretty boring. And look, Rob's got one already pre-made because he's trying There's to show there, there. Aerials come in at three antennas. And essentially what this device does is it broadcasts a Wi-Fi signal. Now it's a little bit smarter than that. It can actually read, uh, it can track um, Wi-Fi hotspots that people are trying to connect to. So every time you connect to something on your phone, your phone keeps retrying to connect to that hotspot just in case you go back in that area. I didn't know that until actually this morning. <laughs> and what we managed to pick up was a list of hotspots of everybody in our office had previously connected to. So it'll actually broadcast, scan for what people are trying to connect to, and then it'll actually broadcast those hotspots as well. Um, if you want to do these demonstrations, you need to make sure you have an Ethernet cable connected, as we do, uh, because things can go horribly wrong if you try and use Zoom over Wi-Fi while doing this. So you build this together. It's a pretty simple box. And basically, you plug it in in a location. It will broadcast uh, Wi-Fi SSIDs and it'll allow you to get people to connect to your Wi-Fi instead of theirs. And once they connect to your Wi-Fi, you, Wi -Fi, you can do various things. So examples of use might be, you got fed up with an airline charging you for credit card usage. So you plug in your pineapple on the plane and you take down their Wi-Fi and you broadcast their SSID. Do not do that, that is highly illegal. Plus don't mess around with wireless technologies on planes because we're not really sure how much will take down the plane. But you could, if you're an attacker in an airport, want to steal people's credit cards from paying for Wi-Fi, you could host a fake credit card page. You could you could um, put a, a fake uh, Wi-Fi welcome page and say, hey, you got to pay for premium Wi-Fi, enter your credit card name. Or you can even present Office 365 or G Suite logins. Rob's going to show you some of it. Now, the problem is with this is you really want to be as close to the person as possible you want to get on your Wi-Fi because their computer is going to try and connect to their Wi-Fi and it's going to try and connect to your Wi-Fi. Now you can do a deauth attack to keep kicking them off their Wi-Fi, but it's going to try and connect to the SSID and it's probably going to connect to the closest one. The best way to get closest to a person is probably walk up to them, but we want to do something a little bit cooler today. So we have this thing here. This is going to make your experiment a little bit more expensive if you want to do it. So this is a Maverick 3 drone, cost about $2,600 at Best Buy. Three things can you I, can I just... That, that is what I would call an accident waiting to happen, Danny. Accident already <laughs> happened. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, I mean, I'll turn on the, uh, there's, there's been a few incidents. Um, the painters are coming back into Threat Locker's new HQ next week to fix the wall. Um, so uh, outside my office. Uh, but a few things you need on this drone. Um, you need it to be able to lift enough weight to carry a pineapple, which is not too heavy. But um, the rating, this was the only Maverick drone that actually had, a, well, the lowest level Maverick drone that would actually lift the pineapple by their specification. Rob corrected me in that he did actually lift one with a lighter one last year. So if you've got a lighter drone- And a battery, drone, and a battery as well. And a battery as well. But and this was the one, we, we wanted to do this properly. We were flying it four stories high in a public area. So we didn't want it to come crashing down. Uh, so we got the right one. It needs to have a USB-C charging port on it that will not just charge the drone, but will actually charge the pineapple because the pineapple does not have a battery in it. So you either need to be able to lift a backup battery or you need to lift 
you need to charge it. So this one here is handy because it's got USB-C in, which means you can plug the pineapple directly into it and it will power it. So I'm going to plug that back in because we're going to need to power it. And uh, pretty much else outside of that, it needs a pilot. Um, because I crashed it yesterday, I was told I'm not allowed to fly it. Yeah, I'm barred from my toy. Uh, this one has a cool camera as well. And thankfully, we might actually be able to see in the window or at least get some pictures from in the window because when we tried it yesterday, the, the glass on the outside of our building reflected the image. So all they could see was the drone flying in the, on the camera. Today, we are under tornado watch in Orlando, which means the drone might not actually make it. So I'm going to ask Abby to pull a poll up today because the goal is here. We're going to take this drone. We're going to attach this panel to it. Well, Jason's going down and doing that. We're going to get you some footage of him trying to take off. If he crashes, it's going to be really funny. Um, I'm going to ask for a poll as what's the likelihood of this working? <laughs> so we have not rehearsed this hack what at all. We did fly the drone yesterday, but we haven't rehearsed the hack. We are on Tornado Watch. It is looking pretty gray outside today. It's not raining yet. But uh, Gabby, if you can start a poll as to whether we're going to successfully take over my Wi-Fi or Rob's Wi-Fi using the drone, or we're going to, um, at, at, or we're not going to. If you can throw that poll up, we'll see who's right. We may use the the correct or incorrect answer based on whether you win the giveaways at the end. So if, make sure you answer the best you think is going to happen, not Mr. Positivity or Mr. Negativity or Mrs. Positivity or Mrs. Negativity. Answer the best one you're having. So, Jason, first of all, I'm going to hand this over to you, Thank you. and I'm going to let you. Oh, I press something on my keyboard. I'm going to let you go and to bring this up to my window. If he brings it up there, if he gets up here, I will turn my camera around so you can see the window as well. So. Before yeah. people vote, I'd just like to add an addendum to our, um, anyone who saw the um, hacking webinar we did last week, we did mention that never work with children, animals, or hacking tools. Um, I'd just like to add an addendum to that now, which is never work with children, animals, hacking tools, but especially why not Wi-Fi pineapples, because they're really flaky um but we will we will do our best we will do our best so 81 percent of people think this is going to work now i love if, your optimism people yeah so if you remember last week rob had had lots of time to practice i don't get so much time as rob because my <laughs> life's a lot bit busier and i didn't get to practice my my hacking uh tests and we Rob did his first. He was playing with the rubber ducky. And if you recall, we took over Team Viewer and we completely tanked his laptop. So uh, what we're going to give this one to Rob because he can see if he can actually get this one to work. But just for those who weren't here last week, Rob started using his rubber ducky, showed us how to steal data using rubber ducky, showed us how to use Red Rabbit. And then what we did is I got him to connect to my machine using Team Viewer. I didn't connect to his and I tanked his laptop. Uh, the boot sector has still not been repaired, by the way. So uh, <laughs> I completely killed his laptop just by him connecting to my machine. So if you did miss that, um, I don't know, Gabby, maybe you can share where you can get that webinar from. And what I'm going to do as well, we have to mute for a minute while he takes off because apparently the video only shows, although it seems to be showing all four people evenly. Oh, he's already taken off. He's on mute anyway. So here is Jason. Uh, taking the drone up outside my office now i don't see it oh here it is there you go can we see that oh yeah you're right in the middle of the the bar so we need to there you go move a little bit left or right there you go we can see the drone hovering outside my office so um we basically have him closer to me than my access point and that is the goal here now the question is is how steady is his hand. <laughs> um, so, oh, he got even closer. It's really freaking me out now because <laughs> he's spying on me. I wish I could open the window. Oh, that's getting close to the glass. He's being brave. Um, I'm going to wave just in case he can see me. He said it won't reflect because it's, oh, he's waving back. <laughs> there you go. There's a drone wave. <laughs> so, um, okay. The um, So, Rob, now you're closer to my office. Yes, right beside you. Question is, can you can you make it? Or and Rob is right next to me in the room next door. Can we make it? Can we share a screen? Can we show this how how this works? Yes, we can. Bear with me one second and cross our fingers. So really close to the glass. Share my screen. Okay, should be looking at it now. So first of all, the pineapple is broadcasting a wireless network which I am going to connect to. Okay, so this is basically a management network. This is just for configuration of the pineapple. 
Now, bear with me. No pressure, because if you drop that drone, Rob loses the signal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a second. Now, the reason this webinar is not going to be over 20 minutes, because that's about the length of the battery on that drone. And yeah. That's um, so, yeah, just to um, sort of elaborate a little bit on what you mentioned, Danny. So uh, I wasn't previously aware of this either, but basically when your device is looking to connect to a wireless network, it's actually broadcasting what wireless network it is looking to connect to. Okay, so if you have a network at home called Rob's network, your phone is effectively going, is there a Rob's network out there? This is able to pick that up and impersonate that network. So to encourage your device to connect to it. So first thing you'll notice on this uh, admin page on the pineapple, the CPU is actually pretty hammered on this. Now there's a really good reason for that, which is I plugged this, or turn this pineapple on at an event I was at in London recently. Now it was on for probably no more than an hour, but in that hour, it picked up, as you can see here, 481 SSIDs. Okay, so that's 481 separate wireless networks that it saw devices trying to connect to. So added them to its pool so it can then impersonate those networks. Bear with me a second. Okay, uh, but as you can see, the CPU on the uh, Pineapple is pushed pretty hard because it's got 481 SSIDs that it's trying to impersonate. Um, the other, let me just go through the interface a little bit. So it's all very well and good having SSIDs. It's all very well and good having machines connecting to this, thinking there's something else. The question then becomes, what do you do with that? So if you get devices, if you get people's phones, people's laptops, et cetera, connect, to connect through the Wi-Fi pineapple, what do you do with that? Okay, so effectively what you do with it is a man in the middle attack. Okay, so you can broadcast and you can set up what is called an evil portal. Now an evil portal in Wi-Fi pineapple terms is basically a, it mimics a Google login, a Facebook login, a Twitter login, a Office 365 login. So that logon page that you get when you go to log into Office 365, this mimics that. OK, so basically when you try and connect to it, you connect through that network. Next minute you get a pop up saying you need to log into Office 365. Most people see that fairly regularly. Oh, yeah. Sorry. As I said, flaky. Oh, backend seems to be running, but there's no socket available. That will be because of the 481 wireless network. But yeah, point is, it will be it will broadcast a uh, uh, SSID. You connect to that SSID. It then presents a login page for Gmail or Office 365 or whatever your target uses. And again, the beauty about this is you can target it to a particular person. So you know we knew we know Danny, for example, uses say Google. We can pop up a evil portal for Google. So the question is, Rob, if you connect to that Wi-Fi now, are you able to connect to anything on your phone and show us? Um, I'm not actually broadcasting. So the, as you saw, there was 481 Wi-Fi networks in the vicinity. Let me just see. Uh, I'm not broadcasting all 481 at the moment because the pineapple is struggling as it is already. Um, bear with me one second and I will try and do that. Um, should... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, we probably should have uh, made everyone disconnect their Wi-Fi and not have so many networks broadcasting. <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, so these are the, uh, and again, my apologies for being a little bit slow. It is A, outside the window, and B, um, running a lot of stuff. Um, you can see here, you've got different options for the uh, the Pine AP itself. So passive mode, as you can see. Following features are enabled, SSID pool collection and event logging, active is pool collection and also broadcasting as well. And you've got advanced options there too. Um, this pineapple's struggling badly. I don't know, 80% of people had confidence in you, Rob. In confidence in us, Danny, confidence in us. No, no, this one's going on you. If it doesn't work, it's going on you. <laughs> you know what I say to my kids? All your successes are my successes. All your failures are your own. <laughs> Tell you what, you talk for a minute. I'm just going to try and reboot this bad boy. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, you know, probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a few hits on what you can do to reduce your likelihood of being killed by a pineapple um, or a drone outside your office window. It's kind of weird having this guy looking in my office window on a camera right now. 
Um, so first thing you can do is if you don't want someone to put a camera outside your office window, is shut the blinds. So uh, that's going to be my thing now. I don't trust people not to look in from drones. Um, but you can do a few things to reduce your likelihood of a successful cyber attack. Now, the actual pineapple itself, it's very hard to protect yourself from. You have a... Um, you, you know, because they're boarding an SSID, you're boarding it, you're connecting to an SSID, you really don't know what you're connecting to. So it's difficult for you to say, I'm not going to connect to the wrong SSID. A few things you can do is one is don't connect to public networks when you don't need to. Like use uh, use your hotspot on your phone uh, and, then, uh, uh, and use that through cable if you can. But if they don't know that you're broadcasting on Danny's iPhone, they're not as likely to just get caught. The other thing is, now, Rob's going to show you, hopefully, if it works, a Google or a Office 365 login page, which will obviously steal the credentials of anyone who logs into it. Um, make As a user, make sure you're logging into the page you expect to be. Just because it pops up on your phone, it doesn't mean it is what it says it is. But as an IT professional, you have to protect your users from them doing things they shouldn't do. So make sure you've got dual factor authentication on your account. There are so many ways someone can fish somebody's details. Pineapple is just one of those ways. They can send links. People can just log into someone else's computer with a keylogger on it. I mean, even at Zero Trust World last year, we had G2 had a booth set up and they were getting people to write reviews on ThreatLocker, but they wanted to prove that you're a ThreatLocker client. They were asking people to log into their ThreatLocker accounts on their computer and they collected about 50 reviews on that. Now, they weren't doing it as a stitch up. I didn't even know they were doing it. And I said it, why, why did people just put their ThreatLocker password into somebody else's computer? Even IT people at cybersecurity conferences make mistakes. Um, so there's lots of ways you can be fished, but using dual factor authentication is the control that you have control over in IT. It's the thing you can do to stop your users having their data eaten. Um, other things you can do is obviously assume that someone's going to get on your network and, and make sure you harden your environment. Make sure that if they do get onto your Wi-Fi themselves, because they potentially get onto your Wi-Fi using this collecting passwords, make sure that your servers have... Uh, firewalls on them and that only trusted devices on your network can access your servers. So if you're using throughout Locker, you can use our network access controls to allow only, even using DHCP, only certain devices to connect to your servers. It's a great way of protecting yourself if someone gets on your network. And of course, using um, a cable. I mean, it's, it sounds really simple. We use cables in our office for primary computers. We don't use Wi-Fi for primary computers. We use them if we're moving our laptops around, but it reduces your probably of someone intercepting your network connection when they need to. One other thing you can do, okay, if you've got an iPhone, and I'm going to show you mine in pure embarrassment, um, is if you go into your iPhone and you go to your wireless networks, I'm connected to just like a staff here. Don't know how well my screen, oh, my camera's showing. Let me pull up here. So I'm connected to like a staff. If you've got an Android, it's slightly different instructions. Um, if you click the edit button in the top right, this will show you a list of all networks you're trying to connect to. The more networks you're trying to connect to, the more likely you're going to connect to someone's pineapple who just set it up in a broadcast. If you don't need these networks, just click the red button and click delete. Apple did not add a delete all function. I'm intrigued to know if Android has a delete all function on there, but they don't. So you have to go through each one. Apparently I've connected to a lot of wireless networks. Go through and clean it up. Don't, remember, don't auto to connect to networks if you don't need to, because then if someone broadcasts a random signal, you're less likely to get hit. But most importantly, assume you're going to connect to a bad Wi-Fi. If you're connecting to public Wi-Fis, assume the network you're connected to is bad and put other controls in place. Make sure you've got firewall on your computer. Make sure you're blocking inbound traffic. Make sure you're doing everything else. Um, okay, Rob, any luck? Uh, yeah, let me show you what I've got now. It is currently behaving. It may not behave for too much longer, but let's see how we get on. So first of all, as I mentioned earlier, we've got 482 SSIDs in the pool. They were picked up from, as I said, that event I was at in London and everybody trying to connect to it. Um, interestingly enough, I did notice some of the wireless networks here. Park Plaza County Hall. That is a very pleasant hotel, actually, just outside London that I stayed in about two weeks before this event took place. Uh, likewise, Park Plaza, Victoria, London. So again, my devices had connected to those networks at some stage. This picked up the fact that my devices were trying to connect to those networks and basically picked them up and was able to spoof them. So you'll see here, and Dublin Airport Wi-Fi is here as well, lots of different things. But these are all individual SSIDs, individual networks that this has detected people's devices trying to communicate with. Collective Canary Wharf, again, very nice hotel in London that we stayed in some time ago. So you can see here, these are all picked up automatically by the pineapple. 
Now, you'll notice here we have options. So if I want to impersonate those networks, okay, so basically try and get trick people's devices into connecting to it, all I do is impersonate all networks. Now, this is probably going to uh, to take a moment, okay, but what you can you Can you just impersonate one network? <laughs> uh, that is a very good question. Can I just impersonate? Well, I think somebody asked that question. Bear with me. Uh, no, the, we, have a, we have a lab one set up called lab something. Can you do that one or not? No, probably not is the short answer. Let me just do impersonate all. <laughs> the other thing I was going to say, by the way, just to show the evil portals, because somebody had asked questions about the evil portals. So this is how you impersonate the Office 365 logon, the Google logon, et cetera. So you will see as well, bear with me a second. Um, I think this may be posted to the chat as well, where you can actually download these portals from. So it's basically just a web server running on the device. Okay, this is the standard evil portal that effectively it comes with. Okay, you can see this is a preview page of it. OK, which is basically just a default page. But again, imagine that as a Google login page, as an Office 365 login page. You wouldn't know any different to the real thing. You type in a username and password and then next minute they've got it. And um, you can look at the logs on this as well. So if and when somebody does type in those credentials, basically it's logged here and available to. Uh, to use and to misuse. OK, can you connect to it? Can I connect with? Sorry, let me just see if we've got some I'm try and connect to networks it. here. Um, I think it's starting to broadcast several 482 Wi-Fi networks. So just bear with me one second. I'm going to see what I can see. Oh, I'm starting to see loads of them. So I'm just going to pick one. I'm going to say um, UK Sex Summit. Let me connect to that one. <laughs> that was the event we were at. So it says unable to join UK Sex Summit. Try another one. Uh, what about guests? Let's see if any of these work. Oh, no, guest looks like a real one. It's asking for a password. <laughs> um, When you do connect, by the way, we will see notifications here. So you'll see on the interface, it shows me that these are back from November when I actually played with this. But you'll see here, we can see the devices that have connected, disconnected, connected, disconnected. And again, this is where it's getting all those SSIDs from. OK, I am connected to UK Set Summit. And oh, I got congratulations. actually got given, I didn't get a thingy. I just got given the evil portal screen. You didn't show the Microsoft one. So immediately ah. it shows me the screen. So I guess you didn't change the content, but what you can do is you can pretty much get it to show you any HTML and collect any data. So it says evil login screen. So this is obviously the template. Exactly. Uh, if I, if I, I guess if I click authorize, um, it says go away. Um, so I um, am connected. There is a post there. I mean, just Google evil portals. You'll find the list of them anyway. There are current ones there. Instagram, Facebook, Click, O2, Starbucks, Twitter, Yahoo. Um, etc. And I know there is an Office 365 one available as well. So so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask people to put a vote. Do we consider that a success? Because I didn't actually get an Office or G Suite login. I'm going to ask... You uh, get a Gabby, portal login. I got an evil portal login. I mean... Who, uh, listen, I'm, who isn't going to trust an evil portal login? Oh, I don't know. Why don't we put a vote to that? Gabby, I'll let you put that, <laughs> that out there. Do we consider a evil portal login a success? Um, despite the fact it was on a Wi-Fi connection through probably three-quarter inch glass or at least half inch glass here. Uh, but Gabby, I'll let you uh, throw that poll out there. And while she's doing that, I'm going to answer some questions. There's a lot here. A lot of great products. Thanks for continued support. The test will be such a spectacular if it takes down Zoom. No such luck. We are using cables. <laughs> so um, it says here, I'm actually going to correct this one. It says 80% of people are confident with Threat Locker. I don't think this is about Threat Locker. I think you should be confident in your security if you put good controls in place. Threat Locker is a set of tools. Um, you know, we can allow you to stop bad software running. We allow software to be limited what it can do. We allow network controls, but it, it's it's not so much about being confident about Threat Locker, but being confident about tangible controls that harden your environment. And Threat Locker, of course, we're awesome. We make it easy. We back it up with support. So I appreciate people saying that anyway. I don't know the answer to this question. Do you know, does it? Does it do full MITM pass through once authenticated? Yes. There you go. Answered. Um, 
Okay, so the anti solution, I think we've already go over that. This isn't something you can just buy. It's a case of having good security hygiene in your system. You know, making sure people are crashing in your office, use Ethernet where you can, make sure your phone's not auto connecting to other networks, and make sure that you're aware that when you do connect to a network, you are potentially broadcasting. So, um, I do also have spectacularly amazing news, Danny. Go on, results of the poll is in. Oh, uh, yeah, I saw that. And look, 75% said yes, 75% I... people are round wrong. <laughs> so, so uh the, i'm just uh, gonna end the poll now in case anybody changes their mind yeah there you go could um uh, could you do a t- team that we're the phishing email for the evil portal I, I i'm guessing that's asking can you use the evil portal outside of the pineapple the asset answer is yes you can just they're just html files that can be hosted on anything oh, but perfect. um yeah. Okay, so somebody asked, will a VPN provide sufficient security if a user connects to one of those imposter SSIDs? Um, it, the VPN will encrypt traffic throughout. So it's technically yes is the answer. They could do man in the middle attacks, I guess, on an SSL. But I think a VPN is going to provide sufficient. Where you're going to have a problem is when the user connects and it pops up with their G Suite account. They're not on a VPN at that point. It's not going to help you because that's going to go to that local IP address. Yeah, so, the VPN won't protect you from the evil portal. Um, so toggle on your device VPN, what happens when you connect? Um, so again, if the, if the VPN, won't, if you, if you turn on your device VPN, the VPN traffic is encrypted end to end. So you should be good. The, and the pineapple does pick up all requested SSIDs, both two and four, but it's, um, obviously you don't want to pick up too many. Normally you want to target who you're after. Um, so somebody asked, is it worth turning off the Wi-Fi while I'm in public? Look, so I think I think when we're thinking about security, we're thinking about how do we balance security and convenience. Um, generally, t- turning off Wi-Fi is more secure than not turning it off. But it, it, so it's not a bad idea to do that. Um, if but it's also useful to use Wi-Fi. I mean, there's a reason so many are on my phone. I generally use my hotspot. I only use Wi-Fi when I need to use Wi-Fi, and I have a massive list. So it's not always possible to just turn off Wi-Fi, especially if you're in New York City for the day, um, because. Those, those buildings seem to block LTE like mad. Uh, I'm just, I'm actually going to, you mentioned steal credit card information. The evil portal is where it's really useful because one of the things that attackers use this for is presenting paid Wi Fi pages. So if you go on to an airline or you go to an airport where you have to pay for Wi Fi, um, this is where you can say, okay, you got to pay for Wi Fi. They'll replicate those pages and then they'll say, here, give me your credit card number. And just like logging in, you can see that data. So somebody asked, can threat locker mitigate via network controls? Um, so it's not going to stop somebody getting who's connecting to a rubber, du- sorry, not rubber ducky, a pineapple. But threat locker will allow if someone gets onto your network by using a pineapple, collecting information, getting onto your LAN, or potentially feeling, stealing your Wi-Fi password. Then once that device is on your Wi-Fi, it won't be able to talk to your server. If you are a threat locker car- client and you're not already using our network access controls, come into support. Talk to your SE and say, how do I get the network access controls to make sure my server's locked down so only my devices are being, uh, are being used? My wife is going to kill me because I'm going to take one home. You can buy these on Hack5, by the way. <laughs> so, and this is a very quick learning uh, tool on this, but it, it's not your wife that's going to kill you. See what happens when you deauth your home Wi Fi with your kids. It's fine. <laughs> especially i mean i don't know if you've got you, your kids aren't teenagers yet rob but when you take wi-fi away from teenagers that's evil portal shit <laughs> so uh but it it, it it really is worth taking it and a little true story at zero trust world last year we had serious problems with the wi-fi uh, because we did a demonstration of the wi-fi pineapple and then we went up to do our other labs our rubber ducky labs our metasploit labs and no one could get on the wi-fi we were like come call the hotel complain the wi-fi is crap what's going on and it turns out we were deauthing everyone from the Wi-Fi because someone. Yeah, that might have been me, Danny. Yeah, I blame you. Um, those guys downstairs, you can land that drone now. Uh, if the window would open, I'd throw something at it, but it doesn't. Oh, one other thing, I am going to show you a couple of things. Um, when if we get the drone upstairs, you can buy a clip, which is somewhere here, one of these to attach things to your drone, um, rather than strapping it on the back with tie wraps. Um, little trick. It doesn't work. Mine is here. Smash the pieces. It broke. Um, so you don't need to do that. Just put the white, the pineapple strapped onto the back. The other thing is um, when you do that in the DJI app, 
there is a setting that turns off motion sensor because what happens if you strap a pineapple onto the top without turning off obstacle avoidance is it tries to avoid that obstacle attached to the top and it smashes up your office, which is what happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. So the other thing is, which I, I, I did learn. So when we use the strap here, we thought, I mean, this seems like the logical things. You can carry various payloads. You put it in the bottom, you strap it. What we did, and I thought I had this here somewhere. Oh yeah, this is what we did. Oh, here's the rest of the thing. So here's the broken clip, by the way, that did not work so well. But we, we had the clip on there, or half the broken clip. And we had this bag hung down from tie wraps. Now, little physics lesson that I learned yesterday, and I should really know this, is when you put an open bag underneath a propeller blade, it fills with air, which means you get, it's, whatever weight gets pushed down, it gets pushed, pulls the drone up, also pulls it down. Is that so, like a reverse hot air balloon? Yeah, so reverse hot <laughs> So make sure you close the bag if you do use a bag, and maybe don't use a threat locker bag. <laughs> so, uh, but that, that was an interesting fact I learned yesterday. So if you are trying to fly this and... Um, uh, hack something whether you're just flying and drone for fun and you're trying to bring payload i did we did learn a lot of things yesterday um we managed to hit a door frame we landed in someone's lunch and a few people literally lost their their heads <laughs> in the office uh, i also don't recommend you practice insight so um thank you everyone for joining us today and hopefully enjoy the rest of your weekend thank you jason and gabby for organizing and rob as well